incomes are rising. It is truly cosmopolitan. Every language, every region, every religion, every caste has a place here. The worst because it represents highly centralized growth, drying up the rest of Karnataka. It represents massive migration of not the highly skilled and ambitious people, but the low skilled people because they don't have a chance to get a 3,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees income in their villages and towns. Everything is Bangalore. <coughs> Even cities like Mysore and Hubli Tharwar and uh, Belgaum and uh, Raichur and other places are drying up, let alone the smaller towns, let alone the villages. Unless we have second tier and third tier towns, which give opportunity to everybody, which create jobs, so that people don't have to migrate in large numbers to big cities and create big slums and lead lives of desperation. Where a 3,000 rupee income per month for hard work, you have to commute 10 or 15 kilometers each side, each way, morning and evening, and you live, maybe six, seven people live together in a small room, equal to a bathroom in terms of size. How they survive with that income, we don't know. This is the new. Unless second, third tier towns develop, unless development is decentralized, unless opportunities are available everywhere, even as Bangalore grows as a high-tech city, as a symbol of economic growth and modernity in this country, unless this happens together, this city will suffer and the rest of the state will suffer. And therefore, we stand for balanced growth and growth of small towns, growth of other cities as hubs of economic growth, opportunity everywhere. Look at Bangalore city, look at any town, any village. Power is so centralized that the smallest thing you want to do, you have to go to the MLA, the MP, to the minister, oftentimes the chief minister. In this day and age, unless the communities are empowered, unless to every ward, every municipal ward in Bangalore city, every village panchayat, and every ward and every municipality, Unless the state government devolves at least a thousand rupees per capita, a thousand rupees per capita to each community and ask them to take care of their own affairs, their local garbage disposal, their streets, their street lighting, their water supply, their sewerage. Unless the local issues are handled by the local people, you will not get justice. Lok Sattva Party in Karnataka stands for that kind of empowerment so the communities can take charge. So that the vast tax money that flows to the state government, at least a small part of it, a thousand rupees per capita means only about eight or nine percent of the tax money. The state of Karnataka is spending probably about fifteen thousand rupees per capita, at least. And if you take one thousand rupees and transfer it to the community at the village level, at what level? That is only six or seven percent. 92 rupees, 93 rupees still is in the state government in the Vidhan South. And unless this at least 7-8% money flows directly to the local community to improve the issues locally, we cannot really ensure satisfaction. Water supply, garbage disposal, sewerage, strong water drains, name it, even in Bangalore city, they are in disrepair. Unless local people can take care of many things locally, we cannot improve. Take the water supply to the city of Bangalore. We were doing a quick calculation. Bangalore city has 741 